Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service for the Lebanon Church of Christ in Dresden, Tennessee. Uh, this pre-recorded service is being made available for Sunday, uh, April 23rd, uh, 2023. And we are so glad that you were able to be with us this morning. We've obviously had some beautiful weather the last couple of weeks and then we've had uh, a little bit of a revisit of uh, winter type weather or at least colder weather uh, the last couple of days with the rain coming in. But we are grateful uh, that you're able to be here with us and to share in our time uh, together. If you are uh, able to be at the building today, uh, if you're here in the Dresden area, we would encourage you to come and be with us in person. Uh, you'll benefit, of course, from our singing, from our worship, from our fellowship together. Uh, our Bible classes, we'll have those for all ages. Those will be at 9 a.m. Uh, this morning, and then we'll have worship at 10 a.m. And Lord willing, tonight we'll have our 5 p.m. Uh, discussion Bible study. And we enjoy that time. Uh, able to look at some texts a little bit more deeply uh, than we are on Sunday morning. And so we would certainly uh, encourage you to be with us if you have that opportunity today. Uh, at the close of our time together this morning, I'll have some updates uh, on our sick list and uh, on those who are grieving. We have several folks who are traveling, uh, others who are recovering from uh, surgeries. And we'll try to update you on that as we have the opportunity. We'll also have uh, a look into uh, we'll have one more Sunday in April, uh, Lord willing, next week on the 30th. And then some things that are coming up in May, some events uh, and changes, uh, a couple of changes with our congregational schedule uh, that will affect us on a couple of Sundays that are upcoming. And we'll be sure to let you know uh, that before we're uh, dismissed from here today. Uh, wherever you are this morning, we're glad that you are joining in with us. Uh, if you benefit from sharing this time with us, this period of study, this period of worship, uh, we would encourage you just hit share. Uh, you can share this here in your social media feed, um, Facebook. Uh, you can uh, send the link uh, using other forms of social media. Uh, send a still photo or whatever uh, might be easier for you. Uh, we, uh, in the past, got a lot of engagement on social media uh, without paying for advertising or anything like that, just from kind of natural uh, occurring uh, engagement. Uh, that has stopped uh, pretty much uh, unless we share it physically. Uh, we're not getting as much of that pickup uh, with engagement. So you sharing it, uh, even if uh, even if that's uh, all you're able to do, if you if you can't talk to someone in person uh, this week, you can still hit share uh, and be able to send that out and be hopefully a word of encouragement for folks. Uh, and we would really appreciate you doing that. Uh, we make posts every day on our church page, and I make posts on my personal page uh, as well to kind of share information about what's going on in our community and what's going on with our congregation. And anything you can do to support that and share that, we would certainly, uh, certainly appreciate. In our time together uh, this morning, we're going to begin here in just a moment with a word of prayer. And then I want to share a lesson from God's Word. We've been talking about uh, change is going to come. And uh, really, uh, with Easter a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago now, uh, and what is happening uh, in our world, what is happening in the lives of believers uh, since we live in this Easter reality, this empty tomb uh, reality. How should we live differently? Uh, and today we want to talk about the promise of the Lord's presence uh, and how that really changes things for us. Uh, the fact that he is with us and is committed to us uh, changes the way that we see the world. And we want to share a little bit about that this morning. We'll have a moment to reflect and then we'll uh, have a couple of prayers that you can use with your family if you're taking the Lord's Supper together. We'll have those announcements that I mentioned uh, and then we'll close with a word of prayer. Uh, whatever brings you to us today, uh, if you are uh, recovering from a surgery or taking treatments, if you were dealing with travel, if you were just um, uh, plowed in, snowed under, uh, so to speak, with all the different school activities as the school year is uh, winding down and testing's been going on. I know we've had several folks in our congregation who have been sick with the flu or sick with strep throat, uh, dealing with different issues. Whatever brings you to us uh, today, if you just uh, happened upon this video uh, and are uh, wanting a little bit of encouragement, uh, a reminder of God's goodness and his presence with us. Uh, we're glad that you're here this morning. Let's begin then with a word of prayer, uh, and then I'll share this lesson time uh, with us, and hopefully we'll be uh, strengthened and edified uh, as we prepare to go out and live the week uh, ahead. Let's pray together before we begin. Our Lord and Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this day, thankful for all the many blessings of life that you give us. We're thankful for the changing of the seasons, and Lord, we know that uh, even with these cooler days and this wetter weather, that summer is coming. And uh, we ask that you would help us to redeem the time that we have, uh, the opportunities that we have, whether that's at the ball field or in the classroom or in the workplace or spending time with our family and friends. 
Help us to be the kind of example that we need to be, not only that we would be an example of doing the right thing, but that the reason for uh, our choices could be clearly seen. And that reason is that we are uh, in relationship with you and wanting to grow closer to you each day. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are undergoing surgeries and who are in the midst of treatment. We have several folks dealing with cancer and other uh, illnesses that have a long-term uh, impact. And we just ask that your hand of healing uh, would be upon them, your hand of strength um, that would allow them the measure of health that they need and the measure of uh, faith that they need to have hope as they carry on uh, through this difficult time. We have several folks in our congregation and community who have lost loved ones. And uh, even in the last few days, we've been involved in memorial services and funerals for different people in our community. And Lord, we just ask that you would be with these families, that you would touch their lives and allow them a measure of comfort uh, in this very difficult time that they're facing. We pray for our missionary families, uh, especially those that we support uh, directly from Lebanon. We pray for the Jones family at Bear Valley as they're training uh, students for ministry. We pray for the Taylor family in Japan, the Mosier family in Louisiana. Uh, we just ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless these, these families and strengthen them. Bless the Smith family in their new work that they've undertaken in Alaska. Uh, bless the Carter family uh, as Chris is working there in the jail ministry uh, and the prison ministry. And Lord, we just ask that all these opportunities we know are different, uh, different scenarios, different struggles that people are facing and ministry and the people that they minister, minister to are facing. Uh, but we just ask that you would be uh, with them and that you would guide them and guide their hearts this week. Be with us here locally as we are surrounded by family and friends, as we are interacting with coworkers and classmates. Help us to be an example and a light uh, to those around us. We pray, Lord, for our sister congregations. Many churches are having uh, different activities with the uh, spring weather and the summer to come, and we just ask that you would watch over and bless uh, these events for good. Be with our students uh, as they finish out the school year. Be with the, the young women in our congregation who are looking forward to church camp this summer, and just bless all of these things that are hopefully causing us to be drawn more and more to you. Uh, Lord, help us as we go each day to Look into your word. Help us to find the things that are there that we can draw forth and bring into our daily lives, that we can make good application, that we can make faithful application, and be better servants to you in the future than we have been up until this point. Be with our leaders of our country, our state, our community. Be with the leaders of the world, that people might know peace, that they might know freedom, that they might know security and safety. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are in danger today who are facing persecution of various kinds, we ask that you would watch over and bless them. We pray that you would bless the um, those who are representing our country and our community in the military and police forces, healthcare workers, teachers, social workers, people that make an impact on so many lives each day. We ask that these impacts could be for good uh, and that we would be drawn uh, to serve others and to uh, commend those who are serving others in our community. We're most thankful for Jesus, for his life, for his example, for the death he was willing to die, for the resurrection that he experienced that gives us hope that his presence will go with us and be with us. We ask that you would forgive us when we fall short of your desires for us, that you would turn us to you again and again, and that we would be able to live in such a way that people could see Christ uh, in our daily lives. Go with us and bless us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, again, it's good to see uh, each one of you uh, this morning and have the opportunity uh, the opportunity to be uh, to be here and to be having this uh, time together. Uh, as I mentioned, we've been talking about in the month of April uh, the idea that change is going to come uh, and in some sense that change has come that as we are living as Christians, as we are living as disciples, as we are living uh, as people who are interested in spiritual things, we are living in a post Easter world in a resurrected, uh, world. Christ is the first fruits. Uh, he has been raised never to die again. He will return not to bear sin, uh, but to bring salvation to all those who love and obey him. And so uh, we are living in that reality, but we're also living before the ultimate culmination uh, of that truth, that Christ is risen and that Christ will come again. And we're living in this time and we're living in this tension between uh, the ascension of Christ as we read there in Acts chapter 1, 
and the second coming of Christ, uh, which will happen, of course, uh, in the future. A lot of times as we live life, it is um, easy to feel frustrated. Uh, it's easy to feel alone. Uh, it's easy to feel uh, isolated. Uh, there's a lot of things that, that do that to us, that give us that feeling of loneliness, uh, that give us that feeling of being left alone. Uh, I think about grief uh, in our family with the death of uh, my grandfather and uh, with other um, sicknesses and deaths that we've experienced in, in the last few years. We are getting a, a fuller understanding through experience of what it's like to miss a person, what it's like to feel uh, alone. I think on a much smaller scale, but still very um, touching and powerful, the idea of moving away from home. Uh, we've had several uh, students in recent years who graduated from Lebanon or graduated from high school and left Lebanon, gone off to college uh, or gone to the workforce or have married and moved maybe to where their spouse was from, uh, maybe several hours or, or several uh, even further, uh, perhaps in the military or uh, to the mission field. Uh, they're great distances from home, and it's easy uh, in those situations to feel isolated, to feel alone. Uh, even though we live in a world that's highly connected, uh, that technology like we're using right now uh, can connect us, we still can feel very isolated and alone. We think about people who um, are uh, deployed in the military. We think about people who are uh, on the mission field and maybe they're there with just their immediate family or maybe they're there with a couple of other team members, but they may be in a country uh, or in a place where people don't speak the same language and the culture uh, is very different and it can be very isolating uh, and make a person feel very alone. I think about we have several of our young students who are going to school for the first time or maybe moving up to uh, middle school or moving up to high school or going off to college uh, for the first time. And that can be very isolating. Uh, it can make us feel uh, very alone. And so uh, we understand that uh, from, from a perspective of Scripture, uh, that to be completely alone, uh, that to be isolated, uh, it's not only emotionally uh, taxing for us as people, it's a spiritual danger. Uh, when James is writing to the early Christians and he talks about pure and undefiled religion, he says it is to visit the widow and the orphan in their affliction and to keep oneself unspotted uh, from the world, James 1 and verse 27. Why the widow and the orphan? Well, because they have no one else, because they are isolated, because they don't have the protection uh, of a larger family or the protection uh, of an extended family, of community uh, to be a part of. Uh, we think of a person who is orphaned uh, as being someone who is alone, uh, someone who is afflicted by the loss of their parents, the loss of their family, uh, someone who maybe perhaps, depending on the circumstances, uh, has been abandoned. Uh, and we know now uh, in, in terms of psychology and sociology that people who are uh, left alone, uh, that they struggle with uh, those issues of, of abandonment, those issues of isolation, sometimes all throughout their lives. Uh, even once they are surrounded uh, by a loving, caring group of people, uh, even once they marry or even once they have children of their own, uh, if they have that experience of being an orphan, of being someone uh, who is abandoned, someone who is isolated, uh, particularly at a very vulnerable time in their life, uh, it's a struggle. Uh, it's a struggle to overcome uh, those feelings uh, that are so deeply rooted. Uh, and one of the great promises of Scripture, uh, one of the great changes that is portended, uh, that is brought forth uh, in the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, is the promise that God will not leave us. Uh, the promise that he will be with us uh, wherever we go. I want to read from John. I actually have several verses in John uh, I want to reference. But to begin with uh, this morning in John chapter 14, um, at the beginning of this passage, Jesus, that famous passage, we read it often at funerals, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And he's going to prepare a place. And, and in a sense, it, it seems very much like he's leaving them. Uh, to be isolated, that he's going away from them. And of course, in physical form, he is. But he says this in verse 15. This is in John chapter 14 and verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. 
Jesus makes a promise there. Uh, he says, I'm going away. He's going to say uh, in a couple of chapters over in uh, John 16, it's better uh, that I go to the Father uh, and that the Comforter will come, the Helper will come, uh, the Holy Spirit will come, uh, and he will guide you. Um, whether it's God the Father uh, in the Old Testament or or uh, the Lord God Almighty in the Old Testament, whether it's Jesus with his disciples in the New Testament, or of course the presence of the Spirit, uh, the presence of God, it is promised again and again in Scripture, the presence of God uh, will never leave us alone. Uh, it will never leave us uh, forsaken. It will never leave us without uh, the access to uh, comfort, the access to uh, his presence. I think that's super important for us um, in recognizing the change from a life without God, uh, a life without that personal relationship with God, uh, to a life that has that relationship and has all the benefits of that relationship. You'll notice Jesus' terminology there. The world doesn't have this experience of the presence of God. God may be revealed in nature. Uh, God may be seen in the lives of his people. But for the believer, the presence of God is closer than that. Uh, it's known in a way that is not known apart from uh, relationship with him. So I want to just suggest uh, just a couple of ideas, uh, three really uh, ideas kind of drawn from that concept uh, of God's presence and what we can know about it and how it impacts impacts our lives. Uh, first, I would suggest... Um, that God's presence, when it comes, uh, God's reality, when it enters into our reality in its fullness, uh, we realize that he will never leave us uh, where we are. In this life, uh, no one, no human being, uh, can truly promise that they will never leave us. Um, ultimately, death is going to separate us. Uh, some of us are going to uh, pass through that valley before others. Uh, when we get married and we do the traditional vows, uh, we talk about the idea till death uh, we do part. The idea that that death will separate even the most faithful uh, spouses. Uh, parents and children will be separated uh, by death. Even if all else is wonderful, uh, even if people have good, long, and healthy lives, uh, ultimately death is going to uh, take people from us. And so, uh, when I say to someone, I'm going to be with you forever, uh, it's understood uh, that we mean, at least in this physical realm, that we're going to be with each other until death, but that death ultimately will uh, separate us. But even before death, there can be other uh, things that separate uh, lives, uh, separate relationships. I think about the deterioration uh, of a person's uh, mind. Um, the prophet Isaiah talks about that you know, a mother um, cannot forget, you know, uh, the, the, the child nursing at her breast. But even if she does forget, the Lord will never forget you, uh, Isaiah 49 and verse 15. Well, what's the focus there? The idea is it's impossible, um, all things being uh, as they should be, for a mother to forget her child. But even if a mother could forget her child and does forget her child, the Lord will remember us. We've probably had the experience of knowing someone, perhaps an older person, uh, or someone who's gone through an accident or gone through a stroke or something like that, whose mind is taken from them, whether by age or whether by uh, an accident or through sickness. And uh, that person, we, we even use this expression, uh, that's not really mom now. Um, and we know that, that there's still value in that relationship, that there's still um, an important aspect of life and that life is sacred and precious. But when a person's mind um, deteriorates or is damaged uh, to the point that they don't know us, uh, it's, it's a separation. Uh, it's a separation. Uh, we might forget our spouse. We might forget uh, our children because of our minds. Our parents or grandparents may forget us uh, because of the things that weigh heavy on them uh, with their health. Uh, but ultimately, God will not forget us. Uh, disease uh, may take people from us. I think about um, friends of mine through the years that their minds may have been uh, in, in good shape, but they were not able to be together, uh, present with their loved ones uh, because of sickness. They maybe um, were in a place of health where they ended up in a nursing home, or maybe they were in a 
uh, mental health facility, or maybe they had to be in a hospital because of their physical health. And as much as they would have wanted to have been present, uh, body to body, face to face uh, with their loved ones, they couldn't be. Uh, their health would not allow it. Um, we, of course, understand also um, arguments that happen, disagreements that happen that divide people. I think about Abraham and Lot. Uh, they were not mad at one another, uh, but their extended family, their, their uh, people that worked for them, were so upset with one another that they had to part company uh, because of that disagreement. Uh, I think about divorce. Uh, so many of us in our lives, whether personally or in the lives of our family members, uh, have seen divorce, and sometimes divorce can be very bitter, uh, and it causes people to be divided uh, one from another. And so when that parent promises their child, I'm never going to leave you, um, in reality, they may have to. There may be a moment where uh, there is perhaps a division of custody, or there may be a point where one of the parents moves away. We mentioned uh, already the idea of deployment, people who uh, are being sent out uh, to do the work of their country, whether in the military or uh, in uh, other government uh, work. And so all of these things have the potential in human relationships uh, to separate us. And yet Christ has said he will never leave us uh, or forsake us. Um, even when Christ left physically, the Comforter comes, the Spirit comes, the presence of God comes. The Father does not leave us. Uh, the Son, through His Word and through His example, does not leave us. The Spirit is with us in the church. The Spirit is guiding us uh, through the Word. And so um, it's important, I think, that we recognize, as Psalm 34 and verse 18 says, uh, God is near to the brokenhearted. Uh, he is near to those who are crushed uh, in spirit. In Jesus, God comes to us, um, and in his love and in his grace and in his compassion, he does not uh, just abandon us. He does not come to us, give us a taste of his goodness, and then leave us where uh, we are. He comes to us just as we are, but he thankfully doesn't leave us that way. He redeems us, he restores us, and then he abides uh, with us in relationship. I think a lot of times when we think about being absent from God, at least in the context of reading scripture, we think about God departing from Israel or or Jesus leaving the disciples. But even in that imagery, um, it's not intended uh, to, to suggest that, that, that we're off God's mind, uh, even if the form of his presence has changed. Uh, once we have experienced the presence of God uh, as his children, uh, as believers, as people who are part of his spiritual family, uh, our lives can never be the same. Uh, if we've truly experienced his presence, uh, we can know that he will not uh, leave us. So he's not going to leave us, but I think it's also important that we think about the idea uh, that his presence will go with us uh, wherever we go. Uh, we've been studying on Sunday night uh, in Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, uh, those three books of history that are found uh, clustered together there in the Old Testament, talking about the time um, of the restoration, the time of the coming back, uh, or at least foreshadowing the coming back uh, from the Babylonian exile. And one of the things that we've pointed out again and again uh, in that study is the idea of place and a theology of a place and the central nature uh, of a place, particularly in the Old Testament uh, understanding of God, the idea of Jerusalem, the idea of the temple, the idea of the land promise that was made to Abraham. And so while we appreciate that aspect of uh, that's highlighted particularly in the Old Testament, we also have to understand uh, that as believers today, uh, with the Holy Spirit with us, present with us, uh, it is not a place that we have to get to geographically, uh, but it is the presence of God that goes with us wherever uh, wherever we go. There's a, a moment that uh, I noticed years ago in studying uh, in Genesis 22, 4 and 5, uh, and usually we talk about the idea of, of uh, kind of the fear and trembling uh, passage where uh, Abraham is called to sacrifice Isaac and he is prepared uh, to do that. But one of the things that's mentioned there in Genesis 22 is that they traveled, uh, you know, to a place, uh, three days to a place, to the Mount of Moriah. 
uh, and they looked afar off. Uh, verse 4 says uh, that Abraham beheld the place afar off, and uh, he says to the servants, you know, the boy, uh, the lad, Isaac and I will go yonder uh, and worship and return to you again. The idea that they went to a distant place, um, at least geographically, that had been set apart uh, for that purpose. I think about Moses in Exodus chapter 3, uh, that he was on the far side of the wilderness when he encountered the presence of God at the burning bush. Think about Jesus going up on the mountain of transfiguration uh, and there seeing Moses and Elijah. Uh, I think about um, the idea that the gospel is to go to the ends of the earth and that promise that's made uh, by Jesus and then, of course, repeated and lived out uh, in the life of the church in the book of Acts. Uh, all of those are uh, powerful things about place, uh, they put focus on physical places, uh, geographic places, uh, and yet uh, in our uh, heart of hearts, in our true emotional spiritual relationship with God, uh, he himself will go with us. Uh, that's the promise as far back as Exodus 33, uh, that God himself will go with us and be our God. Um, that wherever we go, uh, he is present with us. Where can I go from your presence? Uh, the scripture asks. Uh, the idea that God is present with us. Paul will say in Acts chapter 17 that all mankind, and I would say much more specifically, uh, believers uh, live, move, and have their very being uh, in God and in his uh, presence. Jesus, when he's giving the Great Commission, uh, says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, um, you know, teaching them um, to observe all things, baptizing them, teaching them, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of uh, the age. Into all the world. Uh, we're taking God with us into all the world. We're not going out into the world to find God. Uh, he is with us. He is present with us. He is abiding with us. We sing the hymn sometimes, uh, Anywhere is home, if Christ my Lord is there. Um, we want to... Um, go places. Uh, in our family, we love to travel. We love to go places. We've gone to really distant places. We love to just go visit places locally. Uh, but we're not searching for God physically. Uh, we're not just looking um, into nature or looking into all the beautiful architecture or looking into uh, all the different outward relationships that we can have with people in order to find God. Instead, we realize that his presence is already with us. In his presence, the psalmist says in Psalm 16 and verse 11, is the fullness of joy. Um, that's a powerful thing to think about. Uh, we think about that God is not going to leave us where we are, but also the fact that we take God with us wherever we go. Uh, we take him with us. We take his presence with us. Yes, we take it as a comfort to ourselves. Yes, we take it for our protection and for our security spiritually. Yes, we pray that our needs will be met uh, physically, but we also are um, empowered uh, not to go searching for God, but having uh, allowed him to find us and to heal us and make us whole, then we take him with us into every aspect of life. Um, and that's the final thing I would mention. If, if he's not going to leave us where we are and we can take him wherever we go, um, I would suggest also that the promise of his presence, this idea that he's not going to leave us orphans, he's not going to leave us alone, he's not going to leave us lonely, it shows up in the way that he promises that he will abide with us, that he will stay with us, uh, and through him our lives then uh, can be truly faithful and truly fruitful. Um, abiding, the idea of dwelling together um, and being beneficial uh, to one another. I mentioned I had a couple of passages in, in John to look at. If you're there in John uh, 14, maybe just on the page opposite, that's how it's laid out in my Bible. There in John 15, uh, Jesus is talking about the vine and the branches and that uh, he is the vine and we are the branches. Unless we abide in him, we cannot bear fruit. He says in John 15 and verse 5, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. It's not just that the Lord is present with us in some sort of uh, abstract way or some way that we can't understand. The Lord's presence has a, uh, a witness, a manifold witness 
uh, of showing up in our lives uh, again and again and again. Anything that we do spiritually, anything that we do that honors God is fruit that is born through our relationship with Christ. Um, you can memorize all the Greek. You can memorize all the Hebrew. You can know how to put a lesson together. You can know how to put thoughts together. You can be a whiz at apologetics. You can be great at personal Bible study. You can win every Bible trivia tournament. But ultimately, bearing fruit is not just from uh, information. It's from being transformed. It's from the transformation that comes from our connection to Christ, our connection to his presence. When he is with us, we have power. When we go away from him, when we pull ourselves away from him, when we choose to go our own way, that power is ultimately breaks down and is corrupted. Um, it's the power that in Acts chapter 4 uh, gave Peter and John the boldness that they preached with that allowed the Sanhedrin and the Jewish leaders to perceive that they had been with Jesus. They weren't educated. They weren't trained. They didn't have uh, the qualities that you would look for in a successful uh, preacher, a successful rabbi, but they had power. They had boldness. And that was a sign, at least even to their enemies, that they were connected, that they had a relationship uh, with Jesus. In John uh, 16, if you want to turn over just one more page, John 16, Jesus, you picking up on that same theme here, uh, he says, uh, he's talking about, uh, again, as I mentioned in, in verse uh, 7, it is to your advantage that I go away. Um, he says, I need to go away so that the helper, the comforter, the spirit uh, will come. If I go away, I will send him uh, to you. I can't go everywhere with you physically, Jesus is saying, but the helper uh, will be able to go with you. In verse 13, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. The idea that the Spirit with us will tell us what we need. Um, the idea that the Spirit, of course, revealed uh, in the um, teachings of the Word, uh, the Spirit uh, guiding us not only in the immediate revelation of truth, but helping us uh, as we understand truth, helping us and interceding with us when we pray. Think of Romans 8. Um, the Spirit is uh, active. The Spirit is working uh, in and through God's people. And it is the, the abiding presence of God uh, through the Spirit that allows us to be faithful, that allows us to be uh, fruitful. Um, Paul will write in 2 Corinthians 4, uh, We do not lose heart. Um, a lot of times when we're lonely, uh, when we're isolated, when we're frustrated, when we're dealing with struggles uh, in our lives, it's very easy to lose heart. Uh, Paul talks about that they were hard-pressed, uh, that they were perplexed but not in despair, um, that there were so many things pressing down uh, upon them as believers, uh, and yet uh, their inward person was being renewed. The outward man, he'll say in 2 Corinthians 4, is perishing. Uh, there's sickness, there's death, there's depression, uh, there's divorce, there's doubts and fears that rise within us. All of these outward things are, 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 are crashing against us, are warring against the soul. But the inward person, the person who is always in the presence of God uh, through that connection with Christ, uh, that person is being renewed day by day. Uh, it mentioned Nehemiah, the study we've been doing on Sunday night, uh, when they are just overwhelmed by their guilt, uh, overwhelmed by the inadequacy of their own uh, strength before God, they begin to wail, they begin to cry out, uh, and they are told that uh, the joy of the Lord, uh, Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, will be your strength. Um, not your own goodness, uh, not your own ability, not your own um, um, ability to carry forward relationships, but God's grace, God's goodness, God's strength is what will be the source of our joy and the source of our protection. Jesus says, I will not leave you orphans. I will not leave you abandoned. I'm not going to leave you uh, without hope. I'm not going to leave you without comfort. I'm not going to leave you without uh, access to my presence through the helper. Um, a lot of times it's, it's, sort of easy, I think, for us to, to get sidetracked and we're doing our own thing and 
Maybe we're standing, we think, pretty well in our own strength, and we forget about God's presence. Uh, we forget about that it's in his presence we can have the fullness of joy, we can have boldness, we can have forgiveness, we can have hope. Um, and instead, we rely on our own strength. And then something comes along in life and knocks us down. And we feel alone. We feel isolated. We feel orphaned, feel abandoned, uh, afflicted, lonely. And the promise of God rises up again, um, the promise to his children, uh, that he will never leave us, that he will never forsake us, um, the promise that he is near to the brokenhearted, the promise that he is near to those who are of a sorrowful spirit. Um, that's a change. Um, there's a lot of things uh, when we look out at the world, we think, boy, the world, there's some good stuff happening out there. People are living how they want to live. At least that's how it seems. Um, and they don't seem to be touched by some of the same hardships, by some of the same difficulties. They don't have to deal with guilt because they don't really have a well-developed sense of right and wrong. They they're not thinking about the needs of others uh, oftentimes. And as we live as believers, it's very uh, easy, I think, for us to begin to feel like we're the only people uh, that feel grief the way that we feel it. We're the only people that feel sorrow the way that we feel it. We're the only people that feel overwhelmed when we see how the world uh, responds to, to the challenges that it faces uh, with more hate and, and more violence and with more aggression um, when things in the world seem to be spinning uh, out of control, it's very easy to feel alone. It's very easy to feel isolated. And yet we remember the promise of Jesus. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Um, I find great comfort in that. Whether that's in our personal uh, challenges that we deal with, personal losses, personal sorrow, personal sickness, personal problems in our relationships, or whether that's when we look at the wider world, um, God has not abandoned his people. God has not abandoned us. God has not abandoned you. God has not abandoned me. Um, as I am in relationship with Christ, he's not going to leave me where I am. He's going to go with me wherever I go. Um, wherever I reach out to him, he is right there. Wherever I feel lost, and lonely, and sad, and sorrowful, he's right there with me. His presence is abiding with me. And when I am willing to abide in him, then I can grow in my faith, and I can be fruitful in his service. We only have the power to live for Christ um, when we receive the power from him. In my own strength, I can't live for Jesus. Uh, I can't live a life that is spiritually minded. I can't live a life that is free from sin. I can't live a life that is focused uh, on eternal things. But when it's more than just knowing about Jesus, when it's more than just information exchange, uh, it becomes a transforming power in my life. Paul said, I want to press forward that I may know him uh, more and more. Uh, I don't want to be, as Paul would say in Romans 12, conformed to this world, but rather transformed by a new mind, a Christ-centered mind. Um, that's a powerful thing for us. The world can't access that. The world, as much as it seems like there's so many of them and so few faithful people, the world is actually alone because they don't have a deep and personal abiding relationship with God. As believers, we have that, and we have the ability to offer it to others through Christ. I think about... Um, John Wesley, the, the preacher of uh, almost 300 years ago now, um, on his deathbed, people were asking, uh, you know, what should we do about this and what should we do about that and what should we, you know, say when, when you pass and all of this. And he was kind of drifting in and out of consciousness and supposedly, uh, based on the testimony of those who were there, uh, he'd been kind of in and out and finally he raises his hands and says, best of all, God is with us. And I love that idea that, um, that as Christians, as believers, as people uh, who are attempting to live the life of faith, for one, the perfection of faith is not up to us. God has saved us through his grace, and we are living in response to that. And when we are living in response to that and walking faithfully and trying to be fruitful in his service and allow him uh, to do his work in the world through us, we can have the confidence that we are not orphaned, that we are not alone, uh, that he is with us.
and all can be well. I think that's a powerful message um, that in Christ, none of us have to be alone, uh, that we have not only our relationship with God, but our relationship with one another. And one of the ways that we remember that and we honor that each week is by partaking of communion. Uh, we commune together, one with another, but we also commune with our Lord. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and gave thanks. And then after supper, he took the cup likewise. And so each first day of the week at Lebanon and wherever Christians are gathered uh, throughout the world, uh, we partake of bread uh, that reminds us of his body that was given for us. And we take of the cup, the fruit of the vine, uh, which is emblematic, which brings to mind the blood that was shed uh, on the cross for us. He meets us in this. Uh, we have communion with one another, but also communion with him. And through this act of memorial, through this act of remembrance, uh, we honor him and we proclaim his death until he comes. If you're there with your family, I would encourage you to take a moment uh, and participate in this. Uh, if you don't have the elements, you're still welcome to join us uh, in the prayers. Uh, but I do think it's important that we, we have this moment each week, particularly when we're gathered uh, together uh, to be able to remember the Lord uh, in this way. I'm going to offer uh, a prayer for the bread. I'll pause for just a moment and offer a prayer for the cup. Uh, if you need to pause the video for more time, uh, feel free to do that. We'll pray for the bread uh, and then the cup. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful. Thankful that you're present with us in so many ways. And we thank you, especially on the first day of the week, when we can remember and honor the sacrifice of Jesus in this way. We pray now for this bread, which for Christians represents his body that was given on the cross. We ask that we would take it in a way that allows us to honor him and remember his death until he comes. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Let's pray also for the cup. Our Heavenly Father, likewise, we pray for this cup, which for us as believers brings to mind the blood of Christ that was shed upon the cross for the sins of the world. We ask that as we remember him in this way, you would help us to allow that presence, allow the presence of that blood to cleanse us and help us to honor him and proclaim his death until he comes again. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I appreciate, uh, again, so much each one of you uh, being here and sharing this time today. I do have just a few announcements for our local folks, especially, uh, that I think these will be helpful as we prepare to go into the week ahead. First, uh, if you're traveling or been sick, uh, haven't been able to be at the building for our worship and for our fellowship, and you give uh, weekly, uh, as we're instructed to in the New Testament, and you need to do that through our local church, um, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to help you do that uh, this week, uh, especially if you've been out for some time. And and uh, I know we've had people who've contacted us and they're just not able, uh, dealing with treatments or sickness, to be present in person. And they want to take part uh, in that way. And uh, we're happy to help you do that. Just let us know if there's a specific need. Uh, today is Brittany Robinson's birthday, and we're thankful for Brittany. Uh, Sunday, uh, the 23rd, today is her birthday. And then Wednesday, April 26th, uh, it will be Sarah Beth and Michael Moore's anniversary, and uh, we are so thankful for Sarah Beth and Michael and for uh, Parker Jack and Leo and want to uh, remember them and encourage them uh, this week. Um, I mentioned we had a couple of congregational updates to share, and I want to do that uh, at this time. Uh, today, as I mentioned, we'll, leave, we'll be meeting at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and Lord willing, at 5 p.m. for our um, Bible study tonight. Next Sunday, next Sunday, April 30th, that's next Sunday, April 30th, uh, there will be no evening service, so no 5 p.m. service at the building. Uh, the Irish Festival will be going on, and uh, several of us are involved in the cemetery walk uh, and other things on that Sunday afternoon that allow us to, to be out and to engage in our community. So we'll be having our worship that morning, and then we'll be uh, able to be involved in that that evening. So 
uh, realize that for next week uh, on the on the 30th uh, about the evening service. We'll not be having that service next week. On Sunday, May 7th, so two weeks, uh, Lord willing, from today, at 1 o'clock at the building, uh, there will be a baby shower for Randy Marie Smith. Uh, her and Will uh, are having a baby. Wesley will be here soon, and uh, we'll be honoring Randy Marie uh, that day uh, and honoring baby uh, Wesley. Uh, note the difference in the time. We're having that at 1 o'clock rather than our normal 2 o'clock. There's also um, the academic banquet and the athletic banquet for the school are taking place that afternoon, and uh, there'll be some overlap in the people uh, where they need to be for that. Uh, so uh, we appreciate Randy Marie letting us have that at 1. And if you have any questions about that, uh, see Anne Marie. Uh, see my Anne Marie about Randy Marie's uh, shower. Uh, and uh, she can get you any information that you need about that. Uh, also, uh, on April 30th, that's next Sunday, uh, there will be a cooperative gospel meeting uh, that's going to be ha uh, held in Gibson County. It's going to be held at the Rutherford Building, uh, Rutherford Church of Christ in Rutherford. Um, but that will be Lawrence Chapel, Tri-Cities, and the Rutherford Church will be hosting that. Uh, Bobby Rawson, who's uh, my good friend and friend to so many in our community and our congregation, uh, will be uh, carrying on that whole meeting. Uh, so it'll be Sunday. Uh, there's three services on Sunday. And then through Wednesday night, there'll be services each evening. And we have a flyer about that, and we've posted about that on Facebook if you need more details. Um, remember that we're updating our directory. We'll be finishing up those updates over the next couple of weeks and uh, getting that out to everybody. Uh, we are still collecting uh, items for the Honduras Drive. Uh, those need to be clothing items, uh, new socks, new underwear, that type of thing, uh, gently used t-shirts, women's clothing, uh, baseball caps are great. Uh, if you have a question about that, see Betsy Robinson. We're going to try to get all of that in, um, Lord willing, by next week on the 30th. Uh, and then they'll have a uh, packing uh, party, packing uh, night at McKenzie. Uh, and we want to have everything at our building so we can carry it over together. Uh, also, if you want to make um, any other type of donation to that, you can see Betsy as well. Uh, our youth class is still collecting funds. Uh, to do acts of kindness in the community, uh, you can see Paige Vaughn if you have any questions about that. Our April prayer calendar is still being posted each day. Um, Power for Today, our devotional booklets, those are also uh, available as well. We mentioned our missionaries in prayer. We want to continue to remember them. We've had some updates about our building uh, improvements, uh, the planning that has been done, and there was a, a meeting after services last week to just kind of look over uh, the different options that we have, and and uh, we're in the midst of, of getting some contracting done uh, to do that and to make those improvements at the building. I want to thank Kurt, um, Matt, Tim, Aaron, uh, so many, Nick, others uh, who have uh, helped with that. That is a really important thing uh, to, um, to realize that those updates uh, need to be made and to be willing to do that, and certainly appreciate uh, everyone being uh, helpful with that and being on board with that. Uh, we may have to be um, um, a little different about our seating, displacing uh, as that happens over the next uh, few months, uh, but we're wanting to do that. Uh, I don't think that there'll be a major change if you've not noticed it, uh, if you've not been with us, but if you have been with us, uh, we're just doing some very good, I think, improvements and updates uh, on several aspects of our, our physical building, uh, and that's partly um, because of a need. Uh, thankfully, we we have a, an active congregation with lots of younger uh, folks, and we're thankful for that, but also a question of stewardship. Uh, we want our building to be welcoming, uh, and if there's some, some uh, physical improvements that can be made to do that, uh, we certainly want to do that, uh, and I appreciate people being on board with that project. I continue to remember our community, our state, our country, as we mentioned, especially those who are dealing with uh, storm relief and storm work uh, that's continuing. We've had some more storms this weekend uh, and want to continue to remember uh, those uh, works in the coming week. Um, please remember Tina Davis uh, as we look at some of our, our health folks and people dealing with treatments. Tina will be having surgery, uh, Lord willing, on May 11th for her breast cancer uh, and we'll be traveling to Nashville for that. So we want to keep Tina in our prayers. Uh, also remember Lanny McIntyre. He'll be having uh, an MRI, I believe that's supposed to be tomorrow on the 24th. Um, I think I think that's still correct. 
Um, and Lanny had a an episode a couple of weeks ago, and I was not able to get his words out, and um, just dealing with some um, stroke type symptoms, and so uh, he's improved, but going to have that MRI to hopefully rule out uh, any major issues. Um, continue to remember Lee Quinn. Lee's been having a hard time. Uh, has been in, in the hospital uh, dealing with some medication uh, issues and adjustments. I want to continue to remember Lee and Judith, certainly at this time. Remember Tommy as well. Uh, Tommy Bradbury, who sees at the nursing home. I want to continue to remember Ricky and Dolores. I talked with Miss Dolores uh, via text this past week, and uh, she is uh, still recovering. Uh, and also remember Miss Neville, uh, Dolores's mom. She is dealing with a, uh, a bad infection. Uh, and uh, had to go to the emergency room and get some fluids and get some antibiotics. And so hopefully she will be uh, improving. So I want to remember that whole family. Continue to remember David Ring, that's Jody's dad, uh, who's recovering from knee replacement. I want to continue to remember Charlie Culver as well, who's um, recovering from the fall that he took and also taking treatments. Uh, remember Jan Cooper, Mr. Edward Hainline, uh, Kay Branson and her mom, Sue. Uh, Miss Faye Robinson, that's Kim's mom. Want we'll to remember her as well. She was able to be out more the last couple of weeks. Uh, we've been asked to remember Mr. Jerry Dale Monroe uh, from the Greenfield Church. I was able to see Mr. Jerry Dale on Friday, and he was uh, uh, able to be out and improving. Want we'll to continue to remember Miss Roberta Parker, that's Andrea's mom. Tammy Doyle, as she is taking treatments. Uh, Lacey Yeely. Uh, who is recovering from knee replacement, along with Myra Deaver and Mitchell Culver. That family's had a lot of health challenges uh, in the last few years and certainly want to continue to remember uh, them. Uh, want to remember the family of Karen Alderdice. Uh, Karen, of course, known to us in our community. Uh, her services were held yesterday at Martin. Uh, her husband is Greg, and then many of us know uh, Little Greg. Uh, little Greg is in his 30s, but um, uh, known them for many years in our community. And many of us have had a uh, close friendship with Greg and Karen through the years. And Karen has had some um, difficult uh, health challenges uh, with her uh, memory and, and that sort of thing uh, in the last few years. But she did uh, pass away last weekend unexpectedly. I uh, believe she had a heart attack. And um, that was not expected. And although her health had been poor in many ways, uh, that was a, a shock to them. So I want to continue to remember uh, the Alderdice uh, family. Uh, there will be others, of course, um, that we need to uh, remember. Uh, please continue to remember Greta uh, Hughes, uh, both in the loss of Ronell and also with some heart issues that Greta is continuing to have. Um, went back to have a cardiologist this week and wore the heart monitor uh, and will hopefully have some, uh, some positive updates going forward uh, with her. Uh, there may be some folks that need to be added, uh, some changes that take place uh, we'll try to update here uh, on Facebook uh, and uh, through uh, text and whatnot if there's anything if, um, uh, that needs to go out immediately. Uh, if not, just let me know and we'll try to get those changed uh, before next week's announcements. Uh, know that the Iris Festival, of course, is starting uh, in this coming week. And um, we want to uh, remember uh, everyone who will be traveling, everyone who's impacted by that. We obviously want to remember our students during this time of testing uh, and their teachers. The end is in sight uh, with the end of the year, but that also sometimes leads to uh, some difficult days at school, some difficult days for our young parents, and obviously want to continue to remember uh, and pray for them each day. Um, we don't have to go it alone in this life. Uh, God is not leaving us alone. He is not abandoning us. He's not forgotten us as his people. Uh, everything's changed because of the death of Christ. His resurrection gives us new life, and his presence with us gives us the power to be faithful, the power to be fruitful as we live in his service. It's not of us. Uh, I don't have the power uh, to live how I ought to live in my own strength. I only have that power through um, taking his word and putting it into practice in my life and allowing him to intercede with me, to guide me, uh, through his word, through his strength, through his providence, and of course through the relationship that we have uh, as his people. Uh, I'm encouraged by that. We don't have to go it alone. We have each other, and best of all, God is with us. Let's go ahead and pray, uh, and we'll be dismissed today, and hope everybody has uh, a great week ahead. Let's pray together. Our Lord and Father in heaven, we thank you for being with us. We thank you that you have promised never to leave us, to never forsake us, 
that you're near to us when we feel most broken, when we feel most hurt, when we feel most lonely, that you are right there with us, uh, abiding with us and giving us the strength to bear fruit, giving us the strength to endure and to be faithful in the most difficult of times. We're thankful that in your presence we have the fullness of joy. We're thankful that your joy, the joy that you give us, is our strength. And we ask that you would help us to take that into the week ahead. Help us to live in a post-resurrection reality, Lord. Help us to realize that nothing is the same because of who Jesus is and because of what he's done for us. Help us to not live in fear, but to live in faith. Help us to not uh, allow the challenges of our lives to feel uh, to, help, to make us feel absent from your presence. Help us to realize that you're right there with us, uh, closer than we even realize. Be with us and bless us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hope to see folks today at 9 a.m., uh, 10 a.m., and 5 p.m. Uh, at Lebanon on Lebanon Church Road uh, here in Dresden. We'd love to see you. Hope everyone has a great day.